Hi, George here. And today we're going to be colorizing this photo. It's kind of a nice old fashioned, a little bit of a sepia tone. I'll be doing this inside of Photoshop Elements 2025, but the same technique works for earlier versions of Photoshop Elements as well, except just for the placement of the colorization process. I'll show you where that is in just a bit. First though, if you want to learn everything about how to use Photoshop Elements, including Elements 2025 here. I have courses for all the different versions of Photoshop Elements, and you'll find those on my website. I'll put a link for that in the description. Okay, let's go ahead and start this project. Go over here where it says Background, right-click, and Duplicate Layer, and choose OK. That's just a safety, just in case things get messed up. We can always go back to our safety and start over again. Plus, when you make a new layer here, it's going to automatically save this as a Photoshop Elements file which means it's not going to overwrite your original image. Again, just a safety precaution. Now, when you're doing the automatic colorization in here, Photoshop Elements is going to be looking for edges of things. So it would have no problem in here finding this edge. It may have a bit of a problem right down around here. You have a real problem down below here. The edge is just gone completely. So we want to try to make it easier for Photoshop Elements to find those edges. And the way you do that is by increasing your contrast. Now you can't increase the contrast with an adjustment layer for this one. It has to be on the actual layer. Another reason why we made that duplicate of the background. Let's go up here to Enhance, come down to Lighting, and let's do Levels right here. And notice that all the values are pretty much clumped together right over in here. This is the mid to darker range. It's pretty easy to see that. Lights are over here on the right hand side. So first thing is bring the lights up. And when you do this, keep a very close eye on the lightest parts of the image, like her face over in here. You don't want to go so far that that begins to block up like that. That's not going to look that great. So you can see where the whites are on the histogram right here. Just come in just to the beginning of that, and you should be okay. You can go a little bit past it if you want to. And that will help quite a bit. We can see the edge over here already a bit better. Same thing on the black side. Let's just bring the blacks up a little bit. That increases the contrast. And again, we can see that edge a little bit better right here. So we're getting better edges showing. The middle control here adjusts the overall value. So you can bring it to the left to lighten the image, to the right to darken the image. On this one, don't go too far, but I'm thinking just a little bit lighter might help. Maybe a little bit more on the black. This is just a judgment call. I'm really looking at this edge right here. Nothing we can do down below here. We'll just have to see what happens and see if we can adjust that afterwards. Now, if you want to at this point, you may want to come in and do some other photo retouch stuff, such as this splotch over here, some of those spots in the background. Any of that retouching, do that first before you do your coloration. It just gives you a better image to work with, but we'll save time and skip that step right now. So there is our adjustment. We can take a look at that. There's the original, and you can see how the contrast has increased. We can see our edges a lot better. All right, let's now take a look at that colorization. Go up here to Enhance, and come down here to Colorize Photo. Now this is only here in the last couple of versions of Photoshop Elements. If you're in an earlier version, and if you don't see that right here, then go over here to the Guided Edit section, and you'll find it in Guided Edit. They just moved it over here. Okay, Colorize Photo. Now this is a brand new installation of 2025. I reinstalled it for my previous video, and you'll notice here that the Colorize Photo feature is a separate download. And this only has to be done just one time after you installed Photoshop Elements. So make sure that you have a currently active internet connection, Click on download. This goes real fast. That was it. That was the download. It went that quickly. Okay, here we go. Not too bad. Now on the right hand side, you'll notice that we have four options over here. And we're in the auto section right there. Auto left, manual right. So the first thing here is to click on the different options and see if you like how it looks. We have several to choose from in here. Look at the top one here and the second one. Top one's a bit darker, a bit moodier. Second one's just a bit brighter. The colors seem to be about the same on these, but I'll choose the first one. I think it's a bit more natural looking. Now you can do your own coloration on this. This is just the auto coloration and it's what they consider the best guess. I'd do something different on the dress, I think. And this looks like it's from the Civil War colorization. I think I'd go for more of a green or a khaki color in here, more of a World War I look possibly. You can do that by going up here to manual, click on that. And you have lots of options in here to start off with. The first thing you'll do is to select an area to be colorized. The next one is to add a droplet in that selection, and that tells Photoshop Elements which area you want to color. And you can then come down here and choose a color. Now this is a color palette that was chosen by Photoshop Elements. You may or may not like it. You can expand that a little bit down here. We'll take a look at that in just a second. We'll start off here with 
choosing an area to be colorized. Let's just try colorizing his jacket. Notice it's a real small brush size in there. You can adjust your brush size right here. It's a bit larger. Let's go about halfway in here, 29. It's pretty good. And with this tool, paint into the area, and then Photoshop Elements is going to try to find the edges for you. It's not always that good about this. You see here, we've missed a lot already. Let's see if we can clean that up, if it's at all possible. Sometimes it's not. Sometimes these tools will just not do the job. Let's go over here to subtract, and let's try subtracting out some of the stuff we don't want. This is often the best way to do this. Come in, put it in first, and then take out the stuff you don't want. And that will frequently do a pretty good job. But we'll see how we go here. That's looking okay. If you want to add some more in, just click over on Add right there. Let's add a bit in right down here. Okay, back to Subtract. Let's see if we can get that hand out of there. Not doing too well in the hand. I guess that's about as good as we can do. Let's go back up here to Subtract. Let's see if we can get this out of here. So you see we're a little bit limited in here on our abilities with this. But I'll show you how you can take care of that as well. We'll do that over in the Advanced Mode. Okay, that's pretty good. I think we basically have that. Now come down, click on Droplet Tool, and you put a droplet in that area. That just tells Photoshop Elements to colorize that area. Notice how our color palette has changed once we did that. You can click on the different droplets to choose your color. So there we go. There's our basic color. Now once we have that in here, notice over here I don't have any way to come in and adjust that value. So that's again a limitation of this. I can't really do that. I can try to choose different values in here, maybe adjust that a little bit but we're a bit limited on what can actually be done. This is my biggest complaint with this automatic colorization tool here. Let's go ahead and see how we've done on this. I won't bother with anything else in here. I think you see how this is working. When you're happy with this, here's our before, here's our after. Click on the OK button, and this takes you over into the advanced mode, and notice that this came in as a new layer, so our layer back here was protected. And that's not too bad. If you're in a hurry, this is a good way to do it. Let me now show you another way to do this which gives you far more control and I think a better result. So let's hide that one. You want to adjust your values, and I think we're fine there. On this technique, we're going to be selecting out areas and then colorizing just those areas here manually. And again, much better controlled this way. But using this as our base layer, let's start with his jacket. And I'm going to want to right click on this and duplicate this layer, choose OK. Let's now zoom in and I'll make a careful selection around that jacket. So I'll grab our marquee tool here. I'm going to use the polygonal lasso, and I'll set my feather here at one just to soften the edge of that just a little bit. Let's start right down here, and we'll come in. We'll make a very careful selection around the jacket, and just work around. Notice that down here, I can now easily come in, well, kind of easily, and see where her dress is. So we have much better control over the area being selected which we didn't have with the automatic colorization tool. And let's take this up and around her hair, right up in here. If it's not quite right, we can come in and adjust this easily afterwards. We have some adjustment ability here, which we didn't have on that automatic tool. Okay, keep on working around. Now with this tool here, you get up close to the edge, hold the space bar down, you can then move that and let go of the space bar. The only problem with this particular tool is if you click too fast, it might come in and collapse your selection. So just make sure you take your time, give it a beat between each click, and then you should be just fine. We can actually get his t-shirt in here, which we couldn't get before. And we'll come around and do this side. And the idea here is we're going to be making new layers for each color and then colorizing each layer separately. And by using different layers, we have control over our selection edge. We also have control over blending modes, a lot of the stuff. It just gives us much more control, much more freedom when we're working with our image. Same thing again, though. If you wanted to do any photo retouching, do that first on that first layer we did before we get to this. You want to have all that stuff done ahead of time. Okay, let's go ahead. We'll get this jacket finished down here. Notice we actually can come in here and do this part of the jacket very easily, which we couldn't before. Now, I can't see anything over here. So I'm going to just kind of guess where that jacket should be. Down here, I can kind of see a shadow across the bottom down here, so we'll do that as the bottom edge. And then up along the lady's hand here. 
And we'll get back around to our beginning spot right here up and around the sleeve. And again, I can't see it in here, but I can kind of judge where that sleeve should be. And then we have this spot right here. Let's take this out, come down here and change this over to subtract at the bottom right down there. And let's now remove this section in here. As you can see, this technique takes much, much longer than the auto technique. But we have complete control over this. We're not gonna be getting just whatever Photoshop Elements thinks is the right option. We actually get the exact option because we're doing a very careful selection with that. Okay, come back around over here. And there's that selection. We now have to take this hand out, which we had a problem with last time. And this time I can actually get the fingers in here, which I can just kind of barely see there. And we can get the hand out of here properly. Okay, I'll do control zero to fit on screen again. There's our selection. Let's now go up here to layer, come down to new adjustment layer and hue saturation, where it says use previous layer, check that, choose okay. And notice how that selection has now become a layer mask on the hue saturation adjustment. Let's click on colorize. And I now can come in here and change the color to anything that I want very easily with just these slider controls. I'm gonna give it just a little bit of a green tint like that. I can adjust my saturation here so I can go real subtle or much more saturated. So you have perfect control over your colors. We can lighten and darken here, but this normally doesn't work out that well. So I usually leave lightness at zero. There we go. I think that's a much better coloration on that. And let's close that down. And for everything else, it'll be the exact same techniques. Let's come into a little bit with the flesh tones in here. We can do them all the same. And before we add a second area of color, there are a couple of things we need to do. First off, I'm going to name this layer here jacket, just so I know what that is. And then second, even though we have the hue coloration in here, coloring just that jacket, we're still seeing the whole layer. I can show that if I hide this layer here, notice that I'm still seeing the whole layer. I want to only see just the jacket on this one layer. And then we can easily colorize everything else. So to do that, go up here to the layer mask that's on the hue saturation adjustment layer. Hold the Alt key down and drag that down to this layer. It then adds that layer mask down here. And we're now seeing just that recolorized part of that photo. Now, if I bring this one back in again, it looks just like it should be. So we want to make sure these are separated out so we're only seeing just the color that we're using on this one layer and nothing else. All right, let's now come down here to background copy. I'll use this to make another layer. Right click, duplicate layer, choose okay. This is gonna be our skin. Let's call it skin tones. And same thing, we'll go in and make a selection around the skin tones. Now I could do the face, the hand down here, this hand, that hand, and this face, put those all on the same layer. No, I'll probably do that. But for this video, I'll do just the face and the hand. So we can save some time there. Let's so go ahead and we'll zoom in on this. There we go. Back to our selection tool. Come down here and make sure that this is set at new. We'll be changing that over to add once we go to the second part. And then come in here and exact same thing as we did for the jacket. Just make a nice careful selection right around the face. Doesn't have to be perfect. It'll look just fine. Okay, let's just move up around here. Now, sometimes these come in and they are too hard. That's why we have our feathering set at one pixel just to help soften that out just a little bit and it should be all we need. But if you have to, you can soften things down a little bit more. This are, the top part of the ear here is the exact same value as that background. That's one of the reasons that that didn't come in that well on the automated version of this. Photoshop Elements couldn't spot where that edge was. It just kind of guessed at it. Whereas in here, we can be much more specific. And I'll come in and I'll get the area up in here where the part is as well while I'm at it. Let's come in like that. Now along the hair, we're gonna to wanna to have this just a little bit softer. Everything else can be a little bit harder on that edge. Okay, work around this ear over here. There we go. And we'll come right back around to the beginning. There we are. Let's now hold the space bar down and move down here to the hand. Now for the hand, this is very important. Come down here and change this to add. If you don't do that, then you'll lose that face selection. Let's make sure this is set at add. And let's now come in and get the area where the hand is. A little bit outside because there is some shadow in there and the hand is shadowed. And that's correct. 
in up around this side of the jacket in here. There we go. If I zoom out now, let's just do control zero. You see, we now have both of those areas. If I wanted to continue, I'd make a selection for her face, this hand and that hand. We'll stick with this. Exact same trick as last time. Go up here to layer, come down to new adjustment layer, view saturation, check that checkbox, choose OK, click on colorize, and notice that we can now change the face color. Flesh tones are all down here, kind of in the yellow orange area. Maybe a little bit more saturation. You can go too saturated if you want to, just until you find the right color, and then pull the saturation back off of that. It's a bit of a balancing act on this. As I just passed that, we get into the green, so be very careful. It's a very small range in here that you're actually working with. And I think we're looking pretty good right in there. That looks pretty nice, right about there. Okay, close that down. If we're going beyond this, if I was doing more colorization, for instance, colorizing her dress over here, his slacks over there, I'd want to do more of these layers. So we'd have to come in here, click on this layer mask, hold the Alt key down and drag that layer mask down to this layer. So we're now seeing just that part. If I hide the background, there we go. We're only seeing just those two parts in here. And then it's just a matter of doing more of these layers for each of the different colored areas. Now, the nice thing about using this technique is I can easily change my colors again. Just double click, brings back every hue saturation. Same thing up here with the jacket, double click right here on the icon for that adjustment layer. And I can then change my coloration to anything that I want. So very easy to come in here and readjust and get things exactly the way you want them. And that often is the case as you're adding in more colors, you may want to adjust some of the previous colors to help balance out the colors in the image. And this is my preferred technique to colorize a black and white photograph. Now, after this video, I'll go through and I'll just finish up the rest of the colors in here. And then if you want that finished file, I will upload that into my HTG Photo Coach program for Photoshop Elements. If you don't have that already, then I'll put a link for that at the top of the description. It's a very useful program for continuing your education with Photoshop Elements. If you're new to Photoshop Elements, if you're brand new to 2025, I recommend getting my video course instead. That's the best place to start. Once you have a good handle on Photoshop Elements, then going for my photo coach is the next best step. If you enjoyed this video, make sure you hit that thumbs up and give me a like. Also make sure you hit that subscribe button if you haven't already done so. And when you do that, hit that bell icon for notifications as my new videos go up. I'm doing new videos every single week and I'll see you next time.